Hi all of you awesome scuba divers out there, welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine, your favourite place for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews. So this video is sponsored by retail giant scuba.com, visit their website for more information about the new Garmin Descent dive computers. So as you may have heard, Garmin have released a third generation of their Descent dive computer which adds all of the Garmin hiking and swimming and cycling and GPS and clever heart rate monitoring cleverness with a fully functional dive computer. And the Mark III i doesn't disappoint. But many divers are asking just what is the difference between the previous version, the Mark II or the Mark II i, and the Mark III i is. So I figured I'd spend a little bit of time, I say a little bit of time, uh, some time with an Excel spreadsheet comparing and contrasting the specs of the new Mark III i to the Mark II i. Now I'm only comparing the larger 51mm Mark III i. Um, I'm not going to deal with the, the, the smaller version, it's just going to get complicated if I had the smaller and the, the non-AI versions as well. Uh, I'm just going to be comparing the, the larger air integrated versions. Starting off at the top, they've improved the battery life from up to 16 days to up to 25 days, which is quite impressive considering that the body of the Mark III i is a little bit smaller than the Mark II i. The diameter is one mil smaller and it's just under half a mil thinner on your wrist, but the new Mark III i is about five grams heavier. Somehow they managed to squeeze out more battery life out of it, probably with just clever energy and efficiency settings uh, and the new screen. The new screen is the first big change. Garmin have dropped the MIP display for a better AMO LED screen that also has touchscreen features on it, which is nice touch, literally. Uh, the resolution on the new screen has improved from 280 to 454 pixels, uh, so it's better resolution on this new screen. The Mark III has redshift mode, uh, which has nothing to do with actual redshift in physics. It just changes the information on the screen to different shades of red to try and preserve your night vision and avoid dazzling yourself when you just checking the information. Uh, if you don't want to go full on red, there's also night vision mode which reduces backlight intensity for compatibility with night vision goggles. If you have night vision goggles, um, if you do own night vision goggles, then chances are you may be also interested in the new ballistics solver, which works out rifle ballistics for a shooting solution based on your location and the local conditions like humidity and wind and all that kind of clever stuff. Um, so that's a new feature. Uh, a separate LED flashlight, is useful in an emergency with variable brightness and a SOS strobe for use in and out of the water. If you've left your torch on the boat and you want to look underneath something uh, or penetrate a wreck or whatever it is, uh, it can get you out of a sticky situation, but of course it's going to drain that battery fairly quickly, so try to use it sparingly. The rear cover has been upgraded from metal to titanium. I'm not entirely sure what the previous version was. Uh, it's only listed as a metal rear cover, uh, but now the listing is stated as a titanium rear cover. The buttons are now listed as leak-proof inductive buttons, so that helps to pre prevent leaks, obviously. Uh, as far as new sensors, Mark III i has SATIQ tech that can pick and choose the best GPS mode based on the surrounding environment. Uh, you can choose between different uh, GPS settings depending on whether you're in a big open space such as the ocean or whether you're uh, like around tall buildings or tall trees. It can pick and choose different GPS modes now. Uh, it also features an ambient light sensor to adjust the screen brightness to the current environment. 
The Mark III I has doubled the depth rating of the Mark II I from 100 meters to 200 meters, which improves the attractiveness of the Mark III for technical divers. Mark III I compare up to eight transmitters compared to five on the previous version, so you can connect to more transmitters at the same time. The big changes in the transmitter though are the subwave sonar-based messaging to send preloaded messages to one another uh, in a 30 meter range. You can also monitor other divers tank pressures and depths when they're close enough to you and it's like 10 meter range um, and to be basically part of your subwave sonar data network. So if you're diving as a group and you all have the same transmitters and the same computers it connects a whole network and you can see everyone else's information. It seems as if the new transmitter works on a similar power range to the previous sonar transmitter and while some divers noted it a, a beeping sound whilst they're diving from the transmitter uh, that may continue because it seems the, um, uh, the the wattage is exactly the same dive view is a new feature with contoured depth maps including dive site locations previously you had the map whenever you're on the surface because it's gps but now they actually have a contoured underwater world so you can see roughly how it moves underneath you and it has select dive site pins so you can say that yeah I need to head over there. It only works on the surface. GPS doesn't penetrate through water particularly well, uh, but yeah, you can see the water depths around you and certain dive sites on the map on your wrist. And a dive readiness tool is designed to provide insight into how physically prepared you are for your next dive. Powered by First Beat Analytics, this feature combines physiological, lifestyle, and other meaningful perspectives to help you make more informed dive planning decisions. You basically get a score that's based on your recent sleep history, residual fatigue from recent exercise, daily stress and physical activity, uh, and when applicable, the effects of jet lag. If you're traveling and you want to go for a dive, it takes that into account. These insights into how your body is navigating the challenges of life complement dive-specific factors such as current tissue load to recommend how ready you are for the dive ahead and how conservative you probably should be. And additional screens for each dive mode uh, that features the fields that you want to see. You can pick and choose uh, so you get a bit more flexibility on the dive screens when you're in the water. To aid readability and help maintain night vision, an ambient light sensor gives a green luminescence to your watch face in low light conditions. Similar to that red shift I mentioned earlier, but the human eye can pick out more shades of green than any other color. So as it starts to see things go really dark when you're on a night dive, it'll just automatically go I think they call it loom mode where it just turns a bit green it's, it, it uses less power and it's less bright you're less dazzling but you can pick out more information the dive variometer provides hepatic like vibrations uh, and or audible feedback for a free diver so if you're going up and down a line it varies according to your vertical speed the variometer provides feedback by pulsing and or beeping uh, at specific depth intervals. Every time a diver changes that depth, so if you set it for every meter, every time you ascend or descend one meter, it'll beep. And then the dive computer will just pulse or beep uh, or vibrate or both or whatever. Um, and that lets free divers know if they're descending and ascending at a constant rate, whether they're speeding up or whether they're slowing down. Onto boating features, which I've kind of put into diving features as well because it's kind of water related. Uh, there's a new anchor alarm, which I think is only on the surface, but it allows you to enable or disable an alarm on your watch for when the boat moves beyond the drift radius. So it's basically telling you that the anchor's dragging. It'll be nice if it works in the water as well to let you know that your boat won't be exactly where you left it, uh, but I think it's only going to be on the surface. Autopilot control. Again, on the surface, connect your watch to a Garmin GHC20 or compatible chart plotter to engage the autopilot. It's a bit easier instead of having to go to the actual machine. Uh, connect your watch to an onboard Garmin marine product and view streaming boat data right on your wrist wherever you are on the boat. Uh, tide glance lets you 
at a glance, just no local tide information as well. So as you're getting kitted up, uh, it's probably a bit late at that point, but you can just see whether tide's coming in, tide's going out. So this section might be a little bit listy. Uh, I'm a scuba diving specialist, uh, not all of these kind of multi-sports uh, and I'm sure you're probably most interested in the, uh, the diving features but I'm going to rack through these. Uh, there's lots of new surface features on the Mark III also uh, starting with the health snapshot and jet lag advisor for recommendations on when to seek and when to avoid sunlight uh, or just light in general, when to sleep and when to be active to help you recover from your shift in time zone. That's quite a nice feature, something I don't think I've ever seen before uh, but yeah if you travel a lot it's nice just to get you know what you should start trying to hit the hay at this point or no wake up you're in this new time zone now a, uh, a morning report each day it works out your sleep schedule and it works out a morning like daily report summarizing your vitals over the previous day and local weather that's coming up so that's quite nice uh, real-time settings sync with Garmin Connect mobile you don't need to like have your phone out uh, and change the settings on your phone to pair with your uh, with your Mark III. It's always synced in the background. Incident detection alert is quite nice. We're seeing this on more like smart wearable devices. If the Mark III detects that you've been involved in an accident, it can send real-time location information if available obviously to your uh, like emergency contacts just to say hey Steve's been in an accident, here he is, and they can like try and get in contact with you, organize emergency services or whatever, so that's quite a nice feature. Uh, On-device connect IQ store, so you can browse and download apps directly from your watch. You don't have to do it through your phone 100%, you can do it on the, the watch itself. You can view images from notifications on your watch. Uh, this is only available on Android, uh, that's quite nice to see. Usually it's like Apple, iOS only, uh, but now it's, it's Android only. It was text only on the Mark II. You could read your text messages, uh, but now you can see picture images as well, which is kind of cool. For new sports modes, you have motorsports, team sports and in the ring for like mixed martial arts and boxing and stuff uh, high intensity interval training workouts on-screen workout muscle maps um, race glance widgets hrv status uh, course and weather specific race predictors uh, lots of new things for like new multi-sports Next, fork navigation. If you're traveling along, uh, it informs you of upcoming turns and forks in your current path, so you can be alerted earlier uh, and make sure that you don't just amble off without noticing, hey, I should have taken a left over there. The main updates that I'm particularly interested in as a scuba diver is the new screen, the AMO LED screen, uh, the 200 meter depth rating for those deeper divers. It's nice just to have that extra buffer. Leak proof buttons, that's always a nice upgrade. Uh, in water communications and networking, that's pretty cool. I think if an entire family or an entire dive group has this, there's gonna be better like communication between them. Not necessarily sending messages because that might be a bit time cumbersome, uh, but just monitoring everyone else's gas pressures. If someone looks particularly low, they may not have noticed, but if everyone else is noticing, uh, then we're gonna notice these, uh, these failures earlier. Uh, the dive readiness tool, is great just so that people can go, oh, you know what? I am feeling a bit run down. My computer's telling me to take it a little bit easy. Maybe I should skip this dive or just like alert you to, uh, to yeah, take it a little bit easier. Um, the improved dive location maps are really cool. So uh, instead of just being blue, oh look, I'm in the middle of the blue. Uh, it tells you where the, the, the depths are, the maximum depth of the dive site, where the dive site is in relation to you, uh, and a bigger, better, I say bigger, just a better battery, both in like surface mode and underwater, you get more time, so you don't have to recharge it quite as frequently. Some of the problems it seems to have inherited from the previous version uh, because the specs seem the same and they haven't mentioned that they fixed these actual problems. Some divers found that the black coating 
on the titanium versions was very easy to scratch despite it being called diamond like carbon um they they would just find after a few days of just normal like use and wear and tear it would have scratches on it which is unfortunate and the the clever sonar transmitters as i mentioned earlier some divers noticed a beeping noise every few seconds um, whilst diving with a transmitter obviously with the transmitter being right behind your head and it using sonar uh, is just emitting this noise that some divers were hearing uh, there is a setting in the computer and there was on the previous version to adjust the power setting to try and lessen that noise uh, but from what I could tell that they were working on the same power bands so I don't think they've changed that uh, and if you've already set it to the lower setting and you can still hear that noise chances are you're still going to hear it on the T2 transmitter uh, but until I can get my hands on one I can't make any promises they may have fixed them but who can tell uh, the price is also another issue that a lot of divers were noticing uh, sure it's a very expensive piece of equipment when you compare it to standalone dive computers but therein lies the problem it's kind of in a class of its own if it didn't have all of the gps the heart rate monitoring the skiing and cycling modes and other clever sport surface features you you may find the price would be in line with other scuba specific computers but it's a Garmin machine. It's going to have all of those extra features and divers are going to save up to afford this. And when you consider all of that all in one machine that you can wear on your wrist, yeah, it is kind of an, a reasonable price. But what do you think about the Descent Mark III i? I know I certainly want to play with one and see what it's actually like, especially in the water. And if there are any other interesting features that I missed because there's a lot uh, when you go through its specs page. Uh, I managed to pick out the, the differences, what was missing and what's added. Um, but yeah, if I did miss out on anything, by all means, pop it down in the comments below. And remember to head over to scuba.com if you feel like investing in one. You're always welcome on our website, scubadivermag.com and subscribe to the channel here on YouTube for the latest scuba diving news and reviews. Thank you for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving.